Hey guys, Sean here and today we are going to be diving deep into the world of gold and silver ETFs. Now if you are watching this video, you probably sold on the idea of investing to gold or silver. However, the big question remains, are you going to buy the physical bullion or does it make more sense to put your money into the ETF? Now I used to belong to the crowd of if you don't hold it, you don't own it. But then if you look closer into the ETFs, you realize that there are some advantages of putting your money to an ETF compared to physical gold. And for some people, ETFs make more sense. So what should you choose? And in this video, I'll be taking you through everything you need to know about ETFs and how to make the best decision for yourself. If you want more gold and silver investing content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. It helps me grow and I really appreciate your support guys. And remember, always do your own research and consult an investment professional before making any investment decisions. Let's dive right in. Now, gold and silver ETFs allows you to track the price of the metals rather accurately. For example, the SPDR Gold ETF GLD tracks the price of gold. So if the price of gold goes up by 5-10%, to the price of the shares of the GLD will go up by 5 to 10% as well, roughly around there. And if the price plunges by around 10%, the ETF will reflect this and its price will also drop by around 10%. You know, you can easily buy or sell the ETF just like a stock. You can use your online brokerage account to start trading it. And there's no need to buy the metal itself. Worry about the physical premiums which are getting ridiculously high today. And you don't have to pay for any storage fees for the bullion. It's all handled by the ETF itself which is awesome for convenience, right? But before you decide to abandon physical gold or silver for the ETFs, here are 5 things you need to understand about them first and at the end, I'll go through a few scenarios where ETFs or physical bullions might make sense for you. Physical precious metals is great. I have my coin in my hand, my gold and silver coin, and it's directly with me, right? However, because it is physical, I do need to pay a physical premium. So what is the physical premium? A physical premium is essentially the amount of money needed to dig the gold or silver out from the ground, refine it into investment grade purity, stamp it into a coin or bar, and then ship it directly to my hands. Now the big issue I have with physical precious metal, especially physical silver today, is that the premiums are getting just too high. A 1 ounce silver coin can easily have a premium of around 20% and even the bigger 100 ounce bars premiums are around 6-7% to and that immediately eats into your investment as if you decide to sell it back to the dealer, you will only recover the spot price, maybe if you're lucky a few percentage points above. Now with an ETF, you will only have to pay a management fee that is magnitudes lower than the premium of the physical metal. For example, the SLV which is a silver ETF charges an annual management fee of only 0.5%. That means if you put in $10,000 into ETF, you only will need to pay $50 at the end of the year. But if you decide to go physical and buy $1,000 worth of silver in 1 ounce coins, it is likely you'll be paying anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 worth of physical premiums and that is very significant. Now, there are many gold and silver ETFs out there for gold, there's the IAU as well as the GLD and for silver, some of the popular options include the SLV and the PSLV but what is the differences between them? Now, if all these ETFs track the same price of the same metal, why don't I just go for the one that charges the smallest management fee, right? I mean, that's the most obvious thing. But hold on first, there's still one more factor you must take into consideration which is the liquidity of the ETF. Now, an ETF with a high liquidity means that you'll be able to easily enter and exit the fund when you want as well as enjoying a tighter bidder spread. So for example, while the SLV might charge only uh, around 0.5% management fees and the SIVR charges lower than that which is 0.3%, you got to understand that the SLV has over $16 billion under management which is 16 times more than SIVR. There's more trading activity going on here, making it more liquid for investors. And this is particularly important when you want to get out of an ETF during the crash, you want to get out of your position as quickly as possible without suffering more losses. Liquidity is very important when you're looking to choose an ETF. Now, when you buy into a gold or silver ETF, you are not actually buying the physical metal itself. This is an important distinction that I do have to clarify. You are actually buying share into the ETF and it's the ETF's responsibility to back up those shares with the corresponding physical metal. That means by right, if more people buy into the ETF, the managers of the ETF will have to go into the market and back up the trust with more gold or silver. 
The risk here is that there could be a situation where the fund could neglect their duty and it's found out at the end of the day that there really isn't the equivalent amount of physical silver in the ETF. This means there could be a scenario where the physical price of silver could be $30 or maybe it's $50 but the price of the ETF could trade well below that. Now I'm not saying that this will happen but it is a possibility and if the custodian of the ETF goes bankrupt then the assets might be at risk. There could be a situation where the ETF is forced to close and you could be forced to sell your shares at a loss. I believe this is rather unlikely to happen. There's quite a bit of checks and balances going out there but it is a possibility right and we are living in an age that nowadays nothing is really too big to fail. So before you invest into any ETF you need to find out who is the custodian, the keepers and protectors of the physical metal and ask yourself if you trust them. Like for the GLD, the custodian is HSBC Bank, for SLV it is JP Morgan and for PSLV it is the Royal Canadian Mint. Do you trust these organizations? So do your due diligence. Remember you don't actually own title to the metal itself. You are share of you own a share of the ETF and there is a difference. And if the ETF somehow fails and goes into liquidation, there is a scenario where you could lose your money in your ETF investment while those holding physical gold or silver will not have to worry. Now remember when I say ETFs are backed up by the physical metal? That's true, however, if you're the average investor out there like myself, chances are you'll never be able to touch the physical metal. Let me explain. So technically, a gold ETF like GLD will hold physical gold while a silver ETF like SLV will hold physical silver. But here's the catch. Um, chances are, if you're an average investor, you probably won't have enough shares to redeem for the physical metal. And even if you do, some ETFs only allow authorized participants to redeem the physical metal. And that means large financial institutions. And unless you own a bank, and if you're watching this video, chances are I don't think you own a bank you won't be able to redeem your shares for the physical metal itself. Now, here, here's what I mean, right? The silver ETF SLV only allows large institutions to redeem uh, their shares for physical silver. And we aren't really talking about one ounce coins or 10 ounce bars. We are talking about big 1,000 ounce good delivery bars that weighs around 32 kg or 68 pounds each at a minimum. And redemptions can only happen in blocks of 50,000 shares each at, at today's prices. That's over $1 million. Now the PSLV, which is another silver ETF, allows anyone to redeem their shares for the physical metal. You know, you and I, we can all redeem our PSLV shares for the physical metal but it has to be at least 10 of those huge bars at any one time. And at today's prices, that's going to be more than $200,000. And I'm not even going to count in delivery and the storage fees you'll have to pay to get the physical in your hands. So if you really want physical in your hands, an ETF probably isn't the smartest or the quickest way to go about it. You know, unless you own a big car or solar panel factory like Elon Musk, yeah, then sure, an ETF probably makes sense in that case. Now, I love physical gold and silver, I own some. However, some of the biggest headaches I had to confront is how do I store my physical gold and silver safely? I mean, at the end of the day, right, there's only so much that you can store at home without it getting too dangerous. And if we're talking about storage costs, uh, the fees aren't exactly cheap and over time, they eat up considerably into the value of your physical bullion as well. Like the cost in a private vault that has insurance can typically be anywhere from around 0.3% to 0.5% per annum and that is around the same cost of the ETF's annual management fee. And that means that if you buy physical gold or silver and store it in a vault, you'll have to pay both the physical premium which can be anywhere from 5 to 20% depending on whether it's gold, whether it's silver or whether it's a smaller uh, but with a bigger bar and then you need to endure a storage fee of around 0.5% every single year. So let's put this into perspective, right? Uh, if you were to buy $50,000 worth of silver and you buy big bars and you just pay 5% premium and for example, you store it for five years and assume that the price of silver stays flat. Now after five years, it's spot market value would just be slightly around above $46,000. But however, if you buy an ETF, you buy shares in ETF, you just need to pay for the annual management fee without the physical premium. And for the same period of five years, 
even if silver stays stagnant, the value will be around for the $8,800. And that's quite a bit of difference that we can't ignore. Now, after watching this, you might be wondering if ETFs are the best way to go, especially if you want to get the most exposure uh, to gold and silver with your dollar. However, the true answer is it depends. Yeah, both yes and no. And let me explain through three scenarios, right? Now, for our first scenario, if you view gold and silver as generation wealth and you plan to hold them at home and within reach for years, and I mean 5, 10, 20 years, then it makes sense to go physical. You won't need to pay for the management fees of an ETF and you only need to pay the physical premium anyway. It's going to be part of your family treasure and chances are I think you'll just be holding a bit of gold and silver you won't really need to worry too much about external storage elsewhere you won't be buying like kilo bars of a gold and silver you'll be passing down physical gold and silver and you want it within reach in this case physical makes sense now for the second scenario it's quite simple right you have to ask yourself one question do you believe in a financial system I think one of the main motivations of investing uh, in gold and silver is to own an asset that's outside of a financial system. You want to be free from counterparty risk. And if you believe that a financial collapse is really happening, and I really understand the fear here, right? The world is awash in debt, money is being printed globally, especially in the United States, and the valuations of assets are getting sky high, right? A lot of things, especially equities today, might seem overpriced. And in the event that an ETF fails, it will only reinforce the idea that the physical metal is more secure and more in demand and this means that even if you get back all your paper dollars when you sell your etf the physical gold or silver itself could be worth more than those paper dollars that you have right and for a third scenario ask yourself do you feel gold and silver as just an investment now, I understand that not everyone will feel gold and silver as money or wealth preservation. They just want to make money from it and that's okay. If that's the case, ETFs do make sense and if you're looking to maximize your returns and trade the gold and silver markets, I definitely would say to take a closer look into this. You won't lose any physical premium and a transaction fee you'll pay is just your brokerage fee and a prorated amount of the annual management fee when you decide to sell it off you know you don't have to worry about storing the physical metal either and i think one thing that most physical investors don't really take into account is you know the time commitment needed to go out and buy and sell the physical metal and it takes hours days and sometimes even weeks when you want to find a buyer or seller that's willing to trade with you for the price that you want for your physical metal right and this really puts quite a bit of a burden on your own schedule you need to cover up time to do the transaction and if you live in a really shady neighborhood you also need to consider security right but with an etf you can buy and sell with just a click now i believe there's a place and time for physical metals and etf depending on your situation physical gold and silver is great especially if you can get them at spot price this way you will avoid any counterparty risk as well as save on the premiums but it isn't always possible for everyone to do so and etfs are a good avenue to consider getting exposure to the metals but you do have to be aware of the risk out there so there you have it guys do you personally invest or trade the etfs or are you more of a believer in physical gold and silver let me know in the comments below i really love to hear from you all and i'm sure the opinions are going to get quite interesting right and if you love this video be sure to drop me a like and smash that subscribe button thank you for watching and i'll see you around